There is so much similarity between the substitution mechanisms and the elimination mechanisms, you might be starting to wonder how you will be able to tell them apart. How, when you're looking at a reaction, how will you know that it's substitution and not elimination or vice versa, or maybe it's both. It's going to take a few videos for me to go over all of the different ways that you can analyze a reaction to determine if the reaction is substitution or elimination. We are going to start by talking about the substrate and how we can use the structure of the substrate to predict if a reaction will be substitution or elimination. The substrate is just a fancy way for us to say the reactant in the substitution or elimination reaction. This is the electrophile. It is the molecule that has the leaving group. There are two things in a substitution or elimination reaction. There is the molecule with the leaving group, the substrate, and then there is our nucleophile or our base. So the first thing that we're going to learn how to do is analyze the substrate to give us some information about which mechanism that particular substrate will undergo. There are four different types of substrates. One type, the simplest type, is where our leaving group, which I'm abbreviating LG, our leaving group is just simply on a methyl. So this would be something like, for example, CH3Br. This is a very simple molecule. Because this molecule has only one carbon, it cannot do elimination at all. Remember the elimination reaction? We are forming a carbon-carbon double bond. And if you only have one carbon, then you can't make a double bond in between two carbons. So this particular molecule is only capable of doing substitution. Also, if you can recall back from when you were learning SN1 and SN2, this particular molecule is only capable of doing SN2. Because it is so small, it cannot form a carbocation which is necessary for the SN1 reaction. And so this particular molecule, all that it can do is SN2. So if you are looking at a substrate that has this pattern to it, then right away you know that the only possible reaction would be SN2. Unfortunately, the rest of them are going to be quite a bit trickier than this one. So the next thing that we're going to look at is a primary carbon with a leaving group. So that would be a molecule that looked something like this, where our leaving group was on a carbon that was bonded to only one other carbon. These molecules, because they have more than one carbon in them, they are capable of doing both substitution as well as elimination. However, they are not good at forming carbocations. The primary carbocation is very unstable. And for that reason, these molecules can only do the two mechanisms, SN2 and E2. It cannot do SN1 and it cannot do E1 because both of those mechanisms require a carbocation. Um, actually, we're going to make this for both the methyl and the primary because neither of these can form the carbocation that is necessary for E1 or SN1. So um, with the primary alkyl halide or whatever your leaving group is, there's only two possibilities, that's not quite so bad. For the remainder, however, it is going to be quite a bit trickier. So next we're gonna look at molecules where the leaving group is on a secondary carbon. That would be something that looks like this, where our leaving group is on a carbon that is bonded to two carbons. These are capable of doing everything. They can do SN1 because this would form a good carbocation. They can also do SN2 because they are not too sterically hindered for something to attack and kick off the leaving group. 
and they can do E1 again because they can form a good carbocation and E2. So this is um, kind of a mess, and this isn't this isn't a new thing. When we were learning substitution, the secondary alkyl halides were the trickiest ones to predict if they would do SN1 or SN2. So it's not a new idea that the secondary alkyl halides are the most difficult to work with in terms of making predictions about what type of reaction they will take. And then our last option here is the tertiary alkyl halide. And the tertiary alkyl halide, or a molecule that has a leaving group on a tertiary carbon, that will have a structure that looks something like this, where our leaving group is on a carbon that is bonded to three other carbons. So these guys are capable of doing SN1 and E1, because you can get rid of that leaving group and form a really nice carbocation. And they're also capable of doing E2. The only thing that they can't do is SN2 because they're too sterically hindered to have a nucleophile come in and attack at that tertiary carbon. So now, um, this really doesn't, it doesn't help us a ton. When we analyze the structure of our substrate, it does give us a narrowed down list of reactions that are possible, but it's clearly not enough information for us to be able to predict which mechanism or mechanisms will occur. So once we have analyzed the substrate, the next thing that we have to do is analyze the reagent that is reacting with this particular molecule, the nucleophile or the base. That is going to help us narrow this down even more. And so in, before, we, before we do that, we need to talk about the difference between a nucleophile and a base, which is what we'll do in the next video.